Hi, good morning everyone again. This is Mike Corsione, Managing Director of Cordium Cybersecurity and Data Protection Services. And I want to thank you for attending our webinar today on cybersecurity policy tracking and testing, a very popular topic in today's marketplace. I also have with me joining us on today's webinar is my colleague Richard Hudson. Good morning, everyone. And also my colleague Jordan Schwartz, who is our head of our software development and our pilot application. Good morning, Jordan. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So as we go through today's webinar, we'll encourage people to see the instructions on the right-hand side where you can enter questions. Uh, we may ask some, answer some of the questions during the presentation, but at a definite, we will go back towards all the questions at the end and make sure we're introducing them. So as I gave my introduction today, I am the Managing Director of Cordium Cybersecurity Practice. Rich Hudson, who joins me on my team, is brings to us a, a wealth of experience dealing with regulators, uh, primarily the SEC as well as others in the New York Department of Financial Services, FFIEC, and probably a lot more than you care to list, right Richard? Yeah, just name the country and uh, we're covered. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to run through today and what we have listed up on the agenda in addition to the introductions we just went through is we're going to talk as to why it's important to have an effective policy tracking system. So information security policies and procedures are pretty dynamic in today's marketplace and we know a lot of firms are used to tracking policies around your compliance manual, trade allocation, expense allocation, a lot of types of policies that have been somewhat static or really don't require that much change or review. However, the information security policies are pretty dynamic because the risks and threat landscapes continue to change so they definitely become a lot more complex when tracking, not only for enforcing compliance, but also the testing against those. Rich, I know in the banking environment that you come from, uh, tracking systems are something that they rely on pretty heavily. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the regulators expect that when you have issues or gaps in your, your documentation that you have a plan to address them, and the easiest way to do that is to track it uh, from start to finish. So definitely uh, they're looking for uh, especially lately, that there's a system in place which is more effective than, you know, the, the previously or maybe even currently still used uh, spreadsheets. Correct. Correct. And then what we'll also go through today is, you know, a little bit on the more specifics of what regulators are looking for, I think in cybersecurity in general, and then how you're managing it. You know, most of cybersecurity starts with some form of assessment and that leads to a lot of activities and tracking and document materials. What we're also going to review is the cybersecurity and multiple lines of defense model. So just a high touch point, we did a three-part webinar series on this last November, which basically outlines that first line, which is your risk assessment process, the second line, which is the ultimate important compliance section where you're going to have your documentation on your policies and procedures and then the testing component but how all three of those work together and then we're going to go through and show the Cordium tracking system that a lot of our clients have been using for several years for those other procedures that I mentioned around your compliance manual and other types of tracking and testing and how we're building it out now for cybersecurity and information policies and procedures. And in that pilot demo, we're going to go through and show you a, a task calendar around not only cybersecurity policies, but some remediation activities. And one of the areas that our clients are using it a lot for these days and heightened area of concern by the SEC is vendor risk management and the workflows. So what we'll talk about here and why it's important to have a, an effective tracking system. And as I mentioned earlier, most of cybersecurity starts with some form of assessment. So Rich, you've been through the assessment process many, many times, and as we show here, it's really a process that has to be run through in cycles and then repeated. So talk a little bit about really the importance of once the assessment is done, keeping the process moving forward, and why the regulators view that is so important. Yeah, definitely. Uh, basically, the assessment process is an ongoing effort. The Regulators expect that at least annually a risk assessment is done on the security environment. And basically what you have here on the screen is the cyclical nature of that assessment. Each assessment should highlight or point out specific gaps in your cybersecurity. 
And basically the next step is then how do you address those gaps? And then when you actually uh, remediate those issues, you have to reassess again because as we all know, the threat landscape changes. So there will always be some level of, of risk that has to be addressed. So definitely it's a process that's ongoing. And what the regulators look for in particular is the repeated exercise. You know, you should be able to come here, let's say, year to year to see how you've improved or if you've declined. And there should be a reason why. And that should be tracked and documented to show the regulators. Yep. And so we talk about the phrase of maturity. And the diagram on the right there lays out the categories that the regulators are looking for. And want to continually see that firms are making progress and moving forward with their levels of maturity. And the way the regulators categorize maturity, you know, first up front is that baseline, which means you're doing something. You're doing ad hoc processes and procedures. You've done some evaluation of risk, but nothing is really formalized. The second bucket, therefore, evolving is when you do have formal documentation around your policies and procedures, that risk-driven objectives are in place, and that there's some level of formality and accountability. The third box there in the middle, which is highlighted intermediate, is characterized by having not only the process formalized, but also a way to validate your controls for their effectiveness and their efficiency. So in the SEC's most recent cybersecurity risk alert, the guidance they are striving and emphasizing there is for firms to be at an intermediate level to show that you are doing some validation of your testing. The advanced and innovative categories are geared for firms that may have higher levels of inherent risk. So if your business model takes you into categories of dealing with online accounts, um, trading activity, maybe even some algorithmic models that are built into your investment strategies that may require some advanced and innovative strategies to help protect your environment. Rich, the documentation and the testing components, so that SEC sweep exam that comes through, they look for a lot of documentation. Thoughts on, you know, really where putting this together in a tracking system and making it easier for people to manage coming to play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the things I've experienced is uh, documentations being out of date. Um, sometimes the owner of a document, would it be a vendor's policy, network policy, etc. Uh, sometimes because of the day-to-day -day work that folks are tied up with, they forget to go back and update these documents. Um, so it's really important to have a reminder that these things need to be done. And uh, basically, it's expected that whatever is documented is in line with what's actually in practice or on the systems. So certainly, if your systems are not in line with your documentation, it's going to be a problem. So having some way to be reminded of being updated uh, is, is a very good thing. And that's where an automated process certainly helps. Yeah, we definitely say in the cybersecurity assessments we've done, just about 100% of them result in some form of updating updates to the documentation and the policies and procedures for firms. So definitely a, a dynamic environment that firms can, need to keep on top of. So circling back to what we were just reviewing beforehand is what the regulators are looking for is that you really have a way to effectively track your policies and procedures. And traditional way of doing it in spreadsheets firms are learning is really just not as efficient because you're not going to be able to build in certain workflows. You're not going to be able to archive documents. So a real efficient system not only tracks your policies and procedures and the related tasks, but also allows you to put in artifacts around the evidence that you've done for testing those controls. And then in other areas like we do around vendor risk management where you need more of a workflow process and other parties to be involved and have some collaborative review, i.e. legal reviewing contracts, IT reviewing the technology, and maybe even the business side reviewing some of those practicalities around that vendor. So having it into a system that allows you to really use the tools that technology provides to help manage the process is really ultimately what firms need to go. So this is just a refresher slide here that we talked about before, the three lines of defense. And really where you get in the testing and tracking component falls into that third line. So it's either a combination of internal audit and external audit, or even leveraging a third party to come in and help with some of those testing and controls.
So that being said, we're going to come to the point where we'll talk about our Accordion Pilot software. And very shortly, I'll launch a, a brief two-minute video, actually closer to three-minute video, on our pilot application. And then I'm going to hand off to Jordan Schwartz, who will take you through a live demo of pilot and show you how some of those calendars and some of the tasks and workflows work for them. So I ask you to sit back and enjoy this brief promo video for our pilot software. So you deal with compliance? Cordium does too. You work hard to try to cut through the overwhelming layers of regulation to build and maintain a solid compliance infrastructure. We understand. For over a decade, we have used our unique combination of in-house software developers and compliance consultants to create best-in-class software to fulfill our clients' needs. These tools give peace of mind to businesses and enable them to proactively manage their compliance programs. Cordium Pilot will change the way you manage your firm's compliance responsibilities. More than just a compliance roadmap, Pilot is unique because it steers you through your compliance responsibilities from start to finish, a necessity in today's global regulatory environment. Pilot doesn't just tell you what to do. It is a corporate workflow management tool that navigates you through complex compliance and operational tasks and processes from identification to execution. With an interactive calendar, Pilot lets you track, monitor, and report your compliance responsibilities and obligations. The calendar system is easy to set up by category, user, or risk level. Filters allow you to view your data using the parameters that you set. During the implementation process, we will use your compliance manual to create a baseline of tasks to ensure consistency with your current policies and procedures. You can add tasks to the calendar as new regulations arise, or add regulations which may not be part of your current compliance practice. You can also use the suggested task libraries, which contain detailed regulatory background information which is updated as regulations change. Pilot process-driven workflows can automate your tasks by using a combination of forms, actions, and transactions. When you use Cordium Pilot's multiple calendars, filters, and workflows, your data is delivered your way. The Compliance Reference Room is another tool delivering data your way. It is a searchable database of global regulations with practical guidance written in plain English. It covers United States, United Kingdom and Hong Kong regulations with more coming down the road. If there is a question about what a specific regulation means, simply search the knowledge base to access the needed information. With lightning fast performance, complex search capabilities, dynamic reporting functions and full customization, Pilot was designed with the end user in mind. Whether you're a multi-billion dollar institution or an emerging startup firm, Cordium can help you fulfill your compliance responsibilities, enhance operational efficiency, and reduce risk. Thank you for your interest, and please view Cordium product tours on our website. Great. Now I'll hand over to Jordan Schwartz, and Jordan will take us through a brief demo of the pilot software and show some of the lives activity. Jordan, take it away. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as uh, you just saw a bit of background about Pilot, uh, it is a tracking, monitoring, and reporting tool. Uh, and as we're going to focus on today, as is the topic of today's webinar, is how this tool can be used to really help track your cybersecurity uh, policies, procedures, assessments, and remediations, as well as things like your third-party vendors and vendor risk management. Pilot is a, a web-based application, so it is very easy to access and utilize. And although it was originally designed for uh, tracking regulatory compliance, we've been working with both clients as well as Mike and Rich and, and their team on leveraging the, the structure and the backbone of Pilot to really build out a very comprehensive cybersecurity module 
and methods in which you can use to really make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing and adhering to your cybersecurity policies and procedures. When we first launched the application just now, we were on the dashboard. I'll come back to that at the very end to show you how you can leverage some of the dashboard capabilities to see what you need to know uh, on a daily basis. But where we're going to start is really on the calendar. Uh, Pilot is centered around this concept of an interactive calendar. And the idea being that you can use the application to document your policies and processes and turn it into a electronic sort of back and forth uh, tool. Over here on the left, you can see that we have various calendars. And in this demo environment, we've set up calendars here for our day-to-day -day cybersecurity tasks. I'll talk about that in a bit. A remediation calendar to track any remediation items that might have come out of our last assessment, as well as a calendar for vendor contracts. Now, this is customizable, so you can have calendars for just about anything. And those calendars can be permissioned out by users as well. So if you wanted a compliance calendar, an operations calendar, you can do that and permission it out so certain employees can only view and access certain calendars. So uh, first taking a look at the cybersecurity tasks, uh, Mike and Rich talked a bit about the importance of building out your cybersecurity policies and procedures. And one of the hardest things to do after you have those policies built out is actually making sure that you as a firm is adhering to them. And this is something that the regulators are very keenly focused on. And that's really where Pilot comes into play, is it allows you to build out a roadmap for all of the day-to-day -day items that need to be done under your policies and gives you a pretty basic workflow in which you can track and report on what you're actually doing. So as an example, um, you can see that we have quite a bit of, of information here on our cyber tasks and we could drill down a bit more by drilling into certain categories. And you'll see here, uh, the, the icon here will let us filter. And we could say, let's just take a look at uh, items that have to do with incident response. And here we go, we could see all the green items and some gray items here that have to do with incident response. And as we click into them, we could see some background information on this. Now, a lot of the background data will come from uh, our suggested task library. We have a cybersecurity task library that can be utilized, but what Mike and his team do is, is uh, typically uh, customize that library for the firm based on the assessment. And Mike, I'll maybe bounce it uh, back to you and Rich and just talk a, a bit about how that process works in terms of um, really working with a firm to build out their procedures. Yeah, sure, Jordan, no problem. So when we go through any assessment, you're always starting with a documentation request and a review of the documents and then you're assessing what the firm is doing compared to their documentation. So at the conclusion of every assessment, it's usually a, a task would go on the calendar of reviewing those policies and procedures and seeing where alignment needs to be put in sync with what the firm is actually doing. So we would take the process first of going through that policy and identifying tasks. Examples would be patch management policy. And it'll lay in there how the firm is evaluating when they're doing patches, how they're doing the cadence of when they're doing patches on their servers, on their workstations, on their network devices, how are they reviewing the criticality of patches. So these tasks that are identified in a policy are now placed onto the calendar and pilot. That task can be assigned to who is responsible for that task. And then once that task is completed, the individual in IT can click that task and now the report would show that it's completed. If the tasks aren't completed, then that would generate a report also to the person who assigned the task showing that this task hasn't been completed. And it would work very similarly if you were doing the same in your network management procedures, if you had procedures around access rights. So a task in here that would be set up is how frequently in your policy does it call for the firm to do a review of access rights. And so the maybe a quarterly review or in some cases could be monthly, maybe even critical applications it's done more frequently. And then going through the process of reviewing how the firm is handling the joiners, movers, and leavers in those categories. And doing the same re process through all your policies and procedures and generating very similar Jordan to the tasks that you put on the calendar here today. Great. And, um, you know, a lot of people have a, a sort of a common misconception that cybersecurity 
um, you know, is only related to IT. And, and as I said, that's really a misconception. Cybersecurity and these policies and procedures pretty much have touches with almost every area of the business. So it touches HR, it touches legal, it touches operations, it touches uh, almost every employee on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's really one of the great things about Pilot is it, it gives you the opportunity to have people from throughout the business come in and document what they're doing in the application in order to meet certain policies and procedures. Uh, uh, Mike talked a bit about the workflow, but in essence, you would have a, a, a task on here, for example, review our incident response communication plan. Once that task has been completed, we can come in or the applicable user would come in and mark off that this has been completed. We could upload documents here to evidence what's been done. So in this case, we might have um, made some changes to our plan and we might want to upload both the latest version of that plan as well as any markup so we could see the changes. And then we could type in notes here. So that might be, you know, held a meeting with uh, so-and-so and uh, made these three changes to our communications plan, uploaded the latest plan to the intranet. And then that gets saved and gets documented that this has been done. You'll see that that will now change to a little check mark here. So what this does is it allows you to get a really nice kind of macro level overview of what items are, are still outstanding. And you can use these filters here so we could just show us completed tasks or we could just view the ones that are not yet completed. Um, and as you'll see in a few minutes, you can also generate quite a number of reports from here as well to actually export this information out of the system, which is very helpful sort of management type reporting. Uh, if you did have a lot of users using the system, you can also filter by assignees. We only have two users in this demo account, but again, these are all filters here in different ways that you could sort of slice and dice the data that you actually have in the system. So that's kind of tracking your day-to-day -day cyber tasks. Again, this would generally be built out uh, based on your policies and procedures and the frequency on which these tasks occur would typically be done based on a risk assessment that gets done on your firm. Next up would be the remediation calendar. Um, Rich mentioned a bit about this, that we typically will do an assessment and you will go into one of those kind of baseline groups of where you currently stand from an overall cybersecurity perspective. Most likely, every single firm, um, from the smallest up onto the biggest, will always have room for improvement. And that's what's known as remediation. What are items that we need to be working on, that we need to be improving? And um, what we've done here is build out a remediation calendar to basically take those items that have come out of that risk assessment and build them in so that we have a practical roadmap of how we can actually remediate these items and a really nice way for us to document that this is being done and report up to management uh, as well as regulators that, uh, that items are being looked at and fixed. Um, Rich, I'll bounce this over to you just in terms of um, some of the, the way that regulators typically look at remediation uh, and what they expect firms to do after an assessment. Yeah, sure. Um... As, as we mentioned earlier, they, they're looking to know in the last few years for a system to be in place. And that way there's an audit trail, you know, who did it, who worked on the particular task that needed to be completed, and uh, who's accountable. Uh, obviously with spreadsheets you don't have that particular, you know, audit trail system. So uh, they are looking to see that you, had, uh, you have identified your issues from the risk assessment and that you have put it in some system and track it from start to completion and along the way what steps were taken to remediate the issue. So definitely uh, this is what they're looking for and uh, you know if, if anyone is still using a spreadsheet you know that might be a red flag for the, for the regulators. I think one of the comments there on the spreadsheet too Rich and what the regulators look for is I'm sure most of the participants on today's webinar are familiar with those SEC request letters and all the documentation that they're looking for in, in addition to cybersecurity, other areas. So the ability to archive and put those documents here and then generate a report that says give me all the documents related to these categories is pretty helpful to have that at the fingertips. Yeah, and here's an example of, uh, again, of sort of a, a remediation item here that's been closed out and we've uploaded a copy of our assessment and, uh, you know, denoted that this has been looked at and completed. So the final uh, sort of calendar in our demo account here is called vendor contracts. Vendor uh, overall vendor management and vendor risk management is has been a very heavy focus of the regulators, something that the SEC has definitely honed in on as well as uh, other regulators. And um, having a system to not only track your vendors and know 
who are your vendors, uh, but also more importantly is what are the, who are the high risk vendors? Which are the ones that if they go down, they're business critical to our operations is something that um, very often firms don't have a lot of infrastructure around. So what we've done here is, uh, and a lot of our clients have been utilizing Pilot to do this, is to basically use this A as a, a basic tracking mechanism for your vendor contracts. So um, coming in and basically adding in tasks or items here onto the calendar for each vendor, uh, and these would actually land on the renewal dates for those vendor contracts. So um, if we click into one here, you could see that you're able to track the basic information about the vendor. What is this for? What's the category? Who's our main contact? What's the value? What's the renewal date? What are the renewal terms? Um, we can have an actual copy of the contract uploaded here for easy access. And then uh, basically nice, uh, best of all, would be the automated email reminder feature. So within any tasks in Pilot, you could set up alerts. Alerts are in essence email reminders that get sent as many days prior or after after the task as you'd like to set. So in this case, clients will typically utilize this to remind them, hey, our Bloomberg contract is up on this day. We have a 60-day notice period. Um, let's set a reminder 90 days out so that we could reach out to the various team members that utilize that vendor and find out, do we want to continue with this vendor? Do we want to, uh, you know, do we want to negotiate with them? Do we want to cancel? Uh, and it makes sure that you really get that in within the, the, the period that's required under the contract. Additionally, this might be the time to do an assessment on that vendor and perform some, uh, some diligence, uh, depending on the, again, the risk rating of your particular vendors, which also is something that you can track here. Um, you might want to perform a risk rating, which I'll show you a, a workflow that we have in, in just a bit. Um, but in essence, this is a great way to, to sort of track that. And uh, as we get into the reporting function over here, um, you can see just how easy it is to come in and actually generate a list of all your vendors. So for example, this is what we call our reporting or list view. We can come in and, and select our vendor uh, calendar here and then we could filter this down and let's say we want to run a report of all our IT vendors we could just filter by that category maybe we want to add in uh, our ops vendors as well or investment vendors um, and we filter gives us a list here and then just like that we can export this list out to Excel and uh, and get a very nice uh, clean you know view of all of the vendors sort of exported right out within the click of a button of showing when their contracts are up what the vendor is how high risk it is and so on um, moving forward a bit uh, in terms of uh, vendors, obviously I mentioned vendor risk management is another area that's a very big focus. Um, actually doing the proper diligence on your vendors is something that's critically important these days, uh, especially those that are business critical vendors. We developed a vendor risk management workflow which allows you to document and review and have sort of a formal review process for all of the information and by building out a vendor risk profile. And what we're doing is uh, basically giving you kind of uh, placeholders and forms to answer, go through and answer a set of assessment questions on each vendor. So basically going through and on various categories like uh, company risk and contractual arrangements and uh, client reviews, basically going through and ensuring that um, you're answering the appropriate questions and then giving each question a rating of whether the vendor does not meet that, they barely meet it, they meet it some, or they fully meet it. And, uh, and then building in the ability to have uh, upload supporting documentation like the vendor SOC 2 or uh, you know the vendors maybe DDQ or RFP that's been filled out and have the ability to document all of that within here and then add in a, a sort of a compliance or cybersecurity review process around that to really show and document that there's been a thoughtful process we've dotted all our I's we've crossed all our T's in terms of bringing this vendor on and utilizing them. Um, Mike I don't know if you have anything else to add on, on kind of the VRM side of things. Just think just to follow up on some of the commentary we had from our vendor risk management webinar that we did last week that people can still go online and access where this is very critical to have this process documented and outlined because we've had several clients in the last six months receive deficiency notices from the SEC for not having a separate vendor risk management vendor and third party risk management policy that really outlines how your determining the criticality of each vendor in that high, medium, and low risk category, and then what steps you're taking. So once again, it's a process that we hope and expect a lot of people are doing at hoc, at minimum, but you're only going to get credit 
from the regulator if you're able to display to them what you're doing, how you're tracking it, and how you're making those decisions. Rich, any other thoughts on the BRM with the regulators? No, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, they, they are looking for accountability, and that's easily shown using the system. Hmm. Uh, the spreadsheets uh, do not. Um, so definitely, you know, they're looking for accountability. Okay. Thanks, Jordan. Great. Um, so just to answer a few more, uh, or sorry, to show you a few more kind of areas here um, before we get into the Q&A, uh, we have, um, you know, the ability to run a lot of reporting out of here. So, um, for example, we talked about the remediation calendar and how you can use this to track items that you're working on based upon your assessment. Um, you can then come in and run reports. So basically, this would this would be showing us, hey, from everything from the beginning of this year through the end of April, we want to see all the remediation items that have been completed because we want to we want to run a report on that and report up to management. So just like that, we can come in and we can export this to Word or Excel and select the various sort of fields that we'd like to uh, export, and then that would come out into a you know a nice clean report that kind of has all the relevant information that you'd like to include. So it really does make it very easy to take a lot of data that's in here and uh, bring it out into various formats for reporting purposes. Additionally, we have uh, great search capabilities in Pilot. So uh, we have the ability to come in and use our global search so that if you're looking for a particular policy or a vendor or something that you did, you can come in and use this search or our advanced search and find uh, data that's uh, located in the application here. And then there's also a documents area. Uh, this is immensely useful. Um, obviously the kind of basic workflow of Pilot is that you're completing these tasks and you're evidencing what you're doing by uploading documents. These documents all get viewed uh, and stored in this document repository page and you can use the different filters here to filter down document so that uh, if you were going through some type of audit, uh, a SOC 2 audit or a regulatory audit and they're asking for specific information or documentation, very easy to come in. So for example here we can come in and say well for the month of March I want to see everything um, related to our um, you know firewall tasks and I could filter it and it's going to show me we did two firewall reviews in March and I could select them and then download those documents into a zip file altogether. Finally, the last bit, and I'm just a bit conscious of time here, um, is our dashboard. And the dashboard is customizable for each and every user of Pilot, and they can use this as an opportunity to view information that's important to them. So for example, you can see here, this little widget has this box is showing us contracts, upcoming renewals. And if we click on the settings here, you'll be able to see that uh, we've selected a little query to basically say, show us everything on our vendor contracts calendar that's coming up in the next month that is upcoming or overdue. And that way, at quick glance, every time I log in, I could see what contracts are being uh, are being renewed next month that I should be taking a look at. Same thing, you can categorize them by, by tasks, by categories. So here's all our vendor risk management tasks that are coming up in the current quarter um, that have not yet been uh, completed, and so on and so forth. So the dashboard really gives you a very good uh, kind of high-level overview of what's going on in your program. And again, this can be based on calendars by assignees or by categories. So with that, um, pretty much wrapping up the demo portion, I'm going to, uh, Mike, make you the presenter again, and I think we're going to open it up for a, a Q&A. Absolutely. Thanks, Jordan. I definitely see we have a few questions that have rolled in. Um, and I know you can see them in front of you. I think actually they're going to focus a little bit more on pilots. So probably a couple that you've gotten first, Jordan. And the first one is around using a third-party software as the repository for compliance and other documents because books and records require, the books and records rule requires that you store documents at your principal place of business. How do you reconcile that or interpret that? Yeah, um, it's a good question. Um, the the legality or sort of technical legal aspects of that question probably are better suited for our compliance team, our compliance experts. Um, but generally, the majority of our clients do use Pilot as a, a main repository for a lot of what they're doing. Um, however, that being said, as you just saw at the end of the demonstration, pretty much everything from the application can be exported out. So most clients will, uh, in essence, um, you know, do sort of a, a quarterly or biannual dump from the application and store a copy locally. Obviously, um, you know, the, the, the 
infrastructure that we've built surrounding our, our applications is enterprise grade. So in terms of disaster recovery and business continuity, um, quite frankly, our infrastructure is, is often uh, much stronger than a client's actual internal infrastructure. So they feel more comfortable storing data here. Um, but again, most of the, the data and documentation that's stored in Pilot, as you saw, are things that you would also still have stored locally. So you're really using Pilot as a, um, you know, not necessarily your sole data store, but you're using it as an organizational mechanism to take that data and organize it in a way that can be easily reported on. Great, great. And uh, next question, Jordan, comes across in really two parts. One is how do we manage document versions in the system and then manage downloading the most current version of a set of group documents? So I think this kind of falls back to what you were just explaining, but if you could go through a little bit further. Sure. Um, so Pilot is definitely not meant to be a, a sort of a true document management system uh, like you would typically think of a SharePoint, um, which handles versioning. Uh, as I said, Pilot was really meant to take, um, you know, sort of the, the final, typically the final versions of a document and have that uploaded. It's basically whatever you would want to show a regulator or an investor or management in an external report is what would ultimately get uploaded to Pilot. That being said, um, there's nothing saying that you can't upload various versions, uh, especially if you're working on a particular task where maybe there's multiple people working on it and, uh, and, and leveraging it. In that case, it's really just a matter of, um, you know, either tagging uh, things in a certain way so that when you only wanted to download the final versions, you could filter by that tag um, or just having certain naming conventions for how you're actually uploading things. Yeah, actually the tagging, Jordan, is exactly the way we had a client set it up last week where they wanted basically put a tag on each policy identifier and their thought being is they can pull a report later that would show incident response policy, all the tags there, and they could actually see all their versions. So the tagging definitely gives you a lot of that flexibility. Um, the next question comes in around the vendor risk management and when conducting that vendor risk profile and running through that form and the question being does it retain that information or is it flushed out every time you conduct a new form? Ah, that's a good question. Um, it retains that information. So um, the way that the vendor risk uh, workflow works is that every time you run that, it basically kicks off a new instance of the workflow um, so that it, it in essence, um, creates a version of that. Um, saves it so that way the next time it comes around you would have a new version. Um, we're actually working on a feature um, which should be out in the next few weeks which allows you to pull in data from previously filled out workflows so that way um, the next time you go to do a risk assessment on a particular vendor if you wanted to pull in all of the stuff from the last one that you did and then just go through and kind of update certain things you could do that pretty easily without having to run the whole gamut again so um, but in essence it does uh, create a different version each time so that you have a record of what the assessment was in the vendor you know a year ago and what it was a year later. Excellent, excellent. Um, that's the last of the questions that I had typed in on my screen. Um, just wanted to share back with you, Jordan, if you have any, oops, actually, I'm sorry. We do have one other question that popped up. And so while I read this, we'll give time for others. Can we discuss the cost of pilot and whether current subscribers receive discounted rates as opposed to only subscribing to pilot? Yes, um, I assume that means current subscribers to our other product, ELF, um, and yes, definitely uh, if you are a, a user of our ELF product and do not currently use prize, uh, Pilot, there is a, a, a pretty heavily discounted rate. Um, generally, the rate for Pilot, it's, a, um, you know, it's not a terribly expensive product. Uh, it's based on the number of users that you have and the number of task libraries that uh, that you want to utilize. So we have task libraries for a lot of different uh, compliance sort of regulatory regimes like the SEC and FCA and FINRA and SFC. And then we have our um, uh, cybersecurity policies and procedures libraries as well. Um, so uh, depending on that, uh, you know, the, the pricing generally ranges sort of the non-discounted pricing generally ranges anywhere from about um, three to four hundred dollars a month on up to about five to six hundred dollars a month again depending on the number of users that you have. And Jordan you mentioned the ELF software just for those on the 
webinar that may not be familiar with ALF, can you just give about a 30-second preview of ALF? Sure, ELF uh, stands for employee level filing. It's, it's in essence a employee supervision tool that allows you to track uh, various things uh, related to employee compliance, um, one of which is personal trading and PA dealing, as well as employee preclearances and attestations, affirmations, annual questionnaires, things like that. Um, so there is definitely some overlap with ELF and cybersecurity in that, um, you know, a lot of what you might need to be doing in regards to your policies and procedures on the cyber side relate to your employees. So as it relates to training and having employees sign off on certain things related to cybersecurity, those are all things that could be done through ELF. Great. And then one final question that came in is, will we, will we be emailing a copy of this webinar? Yes, we'll have a follow-up to all those that registered for the webinar, providing a link not only to the content but also the audio replay as well as all our other webinars that we've done recently this year on vendor risk management, the New York Department of Financial Services, and the Three Lines of Defense webinar we did at the tail end of last year. So we thank you again for your time joining us today and encourage you to join us in the future and keep a lookout for further invites coming down the road and other webinars on Cordium Cybersecurity and other compliance services. Thank you, everyone, and wish you all a great day. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye now.